Hey there guys, you're watching Dirt Bike Channel. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Kyle Brotherson, and today we're gonna to be talking about overheating bikes and radiator fans. Stick around. So recently my inbox has been flooded with questions regarding the TPI bikes and them overheating and radiator fans. So I wanted to do a video on this so I can just refer people to the video. I also want to set the record straight a little bit. First off, every bike that I've ever been around, doesn't matter whether it's a KTM, Sherco, Honda, Gas Gas, Yamaha, Kawasaki, they all need radiator fans if you're going to be doing slow technical riding. This is especially true if the temperatures are above like about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The bikes run hot if you're in first gear. I currently own three of these TPI bikes. Two of them are right here and the other bike is out of the shot. Um, and I have over 115 hours total on those bikes. And yes, they run a little bit harder than the carbureted bikes. I think it manifests itself in about a five to 10 degree uh, heat increase over the carbureted bikes generally. Now, why is that? It's because these bikes run leaner. The reason why we have TPI is so that KTM could pass emission, pass emission standards in Europe. And by doing, they had to take fuel out of the mixture and make them run leaner, especially down in the low RPMs. So because of that, they run a little bit hotter. I know what I'm talking about here because I own three of these bikes and I've tested about five, owned or tested about five others. In total, I've got over 250 hours on these TPI bikes since 2018. I posted a video of this, which bike was it? This bike overheating on a section of trail and everybody was like, oh man, the TPI bikes suck. What they don't know is every other bike I've ever seen on that trail that didn't have a radiator fan was also pushing coolant out at that exact same spot in the trail. Carbureted bikes, four strokes, two strokes alike. It's a nasty part and you're spinning in first gear. You don't have any air moving through the radiators and that's why everything overheats there. That's where a radiator fan is really a lifesaver and causes the engine to run cool enough so it's not boiling over and pushing fluid out. So if you're spinning the bike in first gear and you're not having any forward progression with air moving through the radiators, it's going to get hot and it's going to overheat. This is especially true on four strokes. This four stroke over here, the Beta, is the one that I've pushed more coolant out of any of these other bikes because the four strokes run hotter. So the two strokes run a little bit leaner. I misspoke there. I didn't mean that the two strokes run leaner. I meant that they run a little bit cooler. Okay, carry on. That's one of the reasons why they're kind of the top choice for hard enduro style riding is because they run a little bit cooler. The other thing that can make your bike run cooler is if it's a running a, a more fuel, like a more rich fuel air mixture, that helps the bikes run cooler. The more you lean the fuel out, makes the bikes run hotter. And if you've got enough speed to shift into second gear on a hill climb, you're pretty much never going to overheat the bike. So that's the thing. Even if you can maintain high RPMs and a quick pace in first gear, the bike will probably never overheat. It's just when you're moving super slow and you're paddling up a hill climb, that's when you're gonna have problems. Or if it's just super technical rock sections, you know, trials bikes. My trials bike has a radiator fan on it because the speeds are always slow. So it pulls some air through the radiator and engine doesn't overheat. I proved this out about a week and a half ago in Idaho. I took both of these two TPI bikes and my 2019 TPI and we did over 205 miles of single track and it was four days and in those four days I only had to stop one time and I was riding this bike it didn't have the fan on it yet I had to stop one time to let the bike cool the other 205 miles I was able to keep a fast enough pace that I never needed a radiator fan it didn't overheat except for the one time on the XC bikes sadly in 2020 they took they used to be pre-wired where they had a wire harness right down here by the radiator that you could just plug into that came from the battery so the power was right there in 2020 KTM has taken that wire harness away from these bikes stock I think it still exists on the XCW bikes but it's not on these bikes apparently they don't think that we're using these bikes for hard enduro riding they think they're just going out for cross-country rides through the desert which that's what the bike is for but we also use it for hard enduro stuff so I ended up I ended up getting and I'll just look on here which one it was I ended up getting the um, 
KTM Digital Radiator Fan Kit for Rocky Mountain ATV. I bought that one. It comes with everything that you need. I believe that the fan is ma actually made by Trailtech. Trailtech makes some good stuff, and a lot of my friends uh, will buy one Trailtech fan and put it on multiple bikes. They'll put it on like you know, just keep moving it over from bike to bike to bike. So that's something that you'll that you can think about is you buy the fan once, and you can probably install on two or three bikes down the road. One of the other reasons why I went with the fan kit that I did. Um, is because it includes an option, or it has an option in there for a switch so that you can turn off the fan. Because here's the thing, when, when the bike is super hot, if that, if that uh, uh, temperature sensor is over the amount uh, that you've programmed, the fan will still run even if the bike is off, which is basically just wasting your battery power. Um, so you can install the switch, if you buy the kit that I bought, it, you can install that switch and, turn, and basically turn it off turn the fan off. I haven't installed that yet because I don't want to end up forgetting to turn the fan back on on the switch, but you can mount the switch in various places on the bike. So that's kind of a nice thing. As you can see, this is a programmable thermostat. So you can program the thermostat to come on anywhere between 150 degrees or 200 degrees. Of course, I'm talking Fahrenheit. You can also do the same thing in Celsius. The numbers are a little different. You guys uh, can figure that out. But this is nice because you can actually program when you want the fan to come on. I, the first time I used this one just this last week, I had it come on at 185. We did an awesome ride up in Idaho again. Hey, and they say it's not a workout on a dirt bike. I call BS. <laughs> uh, where it came on at various times throughout the day and it kept the bike under 190 degrees throughout the whole day, so it was cool and comfortable, and it, it ran flawlessly. This bike and that TPI bike, these 2020 bikes, are running flawless. I could not be happier. One of the reasons I put the nicer fan on this bike is because this bike is being given away to you, one of you, guys, one of you lucky viewers out here. It's gonna be your bike, so I put the programmable thermostat on here. There are cheaper options that you could go with. Um, Rocky Mountain ATV has one from that they make, the, the Tusk brand, there's some Trail Tech ones. Um, I ended up having to actually uh, file down the, the temperature probe just a little bit on this one because on the 2020 radiators, the radiator louvers are just a little bit skinnier than the probe. So the one that I got says it's for a 2019 bike uh, from Rocky Mountain ATV. Um, I'll, I'll have a link down in the description hopefully. Um, so I just had to use, use a file and just kind of file the, the temperature probe just a little bit so that it would fit more properly here in this radiator. Uh, but the thing has is, is, uh, gone perfectly so far. And since I'm doing more and more of these types of rides and the bikes run five to 10 degrees hotter, maybe only five degrees, I'm gonna install a similar radiator fan on this 2020 TPI bike. Uh, neither of these bikes need like an aftermarket ECU because they're both running absolutely primo flawlessly. All the TPI bikes I've had, with the exception of one, ran flawless, and then we put a GET ECU on that bike. And I can tell you that the GET ECU bike did run slightly cooler than this bike with the stock uh, mapping in it up in Idaho. We could see it, right, because we had the bikes right in line with each other. Uh, the one time that this bike was, uh, was uh, very hot, the uh, bike that had the get ECU wasn't quite as hot. It still needs a radiator fan for doing some of the type of riding that we are doing. Anyway, hope you learned something on this video. If you like these videos, please support me by using the links down in the description. You can also support me by page, going to Patreon and doing a monthly donation. And we will be giving this bike away. The sweepstakes will start October 15th. It'll go through December 15th. So this bike and this bike, these two bikes are going to be given away to people for Christmas. This is the 2019 250XE. It's got a electron carburetor installed on it. This is the 2020 300XC TPI. Both these bikes are going to be given away to a lucky viewer. Hopefully one of you guys watching gets it. Anyway, thanks so much and we'll see you in the next video.